Hey everybody, Jeremy here from Video Just Studio, and today I'm gonna show with you to do the text glitch effect in DaVinci Resolve. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, so we're in DaVinci Resolve right now on the edit page, and we're gonna start by bringing a new Fusion composition in our timeline, and then we're gonna move over to Fusion. Once in Fusion, the first thing I want to do is bring a new background and link the output of that background to my media out, and I'm gonna bring the alpha channel down to zero to have transparency. That's just gonna set the canvas for our title. Then we're gonna just take our text and link the output of that text to the background. Now in our text, we're gonna write something like DaVinci, for example, I'm gonna change the font for Montserrat and I'm gonna increase the size. Then I'm gonna take my text node and just drag it up to make some space between the text and the merge tool. The first thing I want to do is a RGB split. There is a lot of way to do it. Uh, one could be, for example, here to play around with the shading. You could also use instance text or displacement node, for example. But to me, the easiest way to do it is to use a prism blur. To do that, I'm gonna select my text and hit shift space on my keyboard. Then we're gonna search for prism and bring the prism blur. Now, as you can see on top of creating that RGB effect, it also just gives some blur to the title, which will work quite well in our scenario. But the blur right now is too strong. So just I'm going to reduce it down quite a bit and I'm going to do the same with the aberration distances to have it more on the border of the text. And then here, aberration strengths, I'm going to just increase that a bit. Now you have also this control on screen to just adjust the position of that RGB split. I'm gonna drag it down completely over there. Right now I'm happy with this, but feel free to play around to get the result that you want. To create glitch animation, it's a lot of trial and error and just seeing what parameter works better than other for your taste. Cause there is so many different ways to do it. Now moving on, right now our text looks too clean for something that is glitchy. So I'm gonna try to destroy a bit that text. So I'm gonna select my prism blur and then I'm gonna hit shift space on my keyboard and search for JPEG and apply the JPEG damage. Now we can just decrease the quality. And as you can see, just gonna come and destroy a bit the edges of the text, which is what we want for a glitch effect. And then the last thing to give it a bit more of texture, I'm gonna bring some scan lines. So I'm gonna hit shift space again on my keyboard and search for scan line bring that in and then here we're just going to increase the line frequency quite a bit in my opinion generally between 14 to 17 maybe uh, is generally quite good then i'm going to select all my nodes move them up and then here with scan line selected i'm going to hit shift space on my keyboard and we're going to search for displace node and bring that in now i'm going to go over to template edit generator and here i'm going to take the noise gradient and bring that in and link that to the green arrow of the displays. Now I'm gonna bring the noise gradient to my viewer. Here we're gonna go to version six. I'm gonna increase the detail to the maximum, the contrast to the maximum. Here I'm gonna unlock the X and Y parameter and I'm just gonna decrease the Y scale. And then here for the C threads, which is the speed of the animation, I'm gonna put two. Now if we play it, as you can see, create a bit of a crazy animation and that's what we're using here with the displays to just destroy our text and create that glitch effect. The displace node is taking the luma value, meaning here the white of our noise gradient and create a mask that is animating our text. Now at that stage, you get pretty much everything set up and you can start to play around to create really the glitch animation that you want. So the value I would recommend you to experiment with are here the detail, the contrast, the brightness, and the X scale and Y scale. You can go to your noise gradient and then here play with those parameters, see the pattern that they create and how it affects your text. But in my opinion, I find that usually you get better result with bigger shape rather than smaller shape like those ones, for example. And usually I find it better to have the detail increase rather than decreased because otherwise it may look too smooth for a glitch effect. But again, this is really up to you and your preferences. Another thing that you can do here in the displace node is going to X and Y and play with the X refraction and the Y refraction. It will deform your text on the horizontal and on the vertical axis. Now we have our animated glitch text, but we don't have an animation in. But if that's what you want, you can just stop there and you have a loop animation going on. Right now, we're just gonna go to extra mile and create an animation in. To do that, I'm gonna go at frame 15. And then here, I'm just gonna select my text. Then I'm gonna go to text, right click on the text box, then select follower, go to the modifier, go to shading. Then in shading, scroll down. Then here, open the size drop down. And here, we're just gonna drop a keyframe on the X. And then we're gonna go to frame zero and bring the X down to zero. 
Now we can go back to timing and here we're gonna put the delay at 1.5. And we're going to switch the order from automatic to random, but one by one. Now let's go back to tool. And here I'm going to go over to shading again, scroll down and here open the softness drop down, go to frame 20, drop a keyframe on the Y at zero and drop a keyframe on the glow at zero. Then you can go to frame zero and increase the Y to 20 and then increase the glow to around zero, 300, 400. Now we can open the spline editor and here we're going to select text to have all our keyframe point, click zoom to fit and then select all the points that we've created. Hit S on our keyboard to smooth out the curve, then hit T to bring the ease in and ease out and increase the ease in to about 85. Once that's done, we have our glitch animation. If you want to play around here with the way the letters are coming in, you can always go back to the text modifier. And then here you can play around with the order. So right now it's random one by one, but we could have choose left to right, for example, to have a different way of displaying those letters. Now the quickest way to bring that glitch text back to normal to finish the animation, in my opinion, is to use a dissolve node. To do that, I'm gonna select my merge, hit shift space on the keyboard, search for dissolve and bring that in. Then we can just select our text, copy it, then paste an instance, and link the output of that text to the dissolve. Then let's bring the dissolve to our viewer. And here, as you can see, the dissolve node will help us go from the background to the foreground. So from our glitch text to a normal one. Here, we're gonna animate that dissolve node by going to frame 30, and then I'm gonna drop a keyframe on background foreground. Then we can go to frame 20 and bring that background foreground down to zero. And now it's just gonna slowly animate back to normal but I don't really like the normal dissolve. Usually what I feel blending pretty well with that glitch effect is the random noise dissolve. It's creating just some extra artifact that help make the transition between the two not too harsh in my opinion. Now we can smooth out that last animation that we've created by just unselecting everything text related, keeping only the dissolve, then zoom to fit, select all two point, and then hit S on our keyboard to smooth out that curve. And again, bringing the ease in to about 85. And that's our final result. Again, there is so many ways to create glitch effect. It's just a matter of trying different things and see what works for you. All right, and that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comment what kind of video you would like to see next. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates, but only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack containing a compilation of 20 titles curated from our library. Link in the description below or at videodigitalstudio.com.